Hello, in this video I'm going to show you guys my favourite cipher setups that I use on Pearl. We've got some nice one ways and some pretty sneaky tripwires and cams that you can use in your games. One of my favourite cams that I like doing is you want to jump onto this ledge like this, you want to walk into this wall and you want to place your cam just behind this railing on the right side, like that. Allows you to see into main allows you to see into art and anybody pushing out of art and sometimes there's a stinky jet that likes updrafting onto this box. You'll be able to see her arm. You can see anybody flanking you so if there's a stinky omen tiptoeing around in your spawn you can ping him with a cam. So it's a pretty good cam. You can also use this cam if you're attacking. So if you're attacking and you come onto site you can chuck the cam like this and now you can clear anybody who's standing in dugout and you can also see you know, if anybody's running back or if anybody's ass is sticking out behind this little box over there. So it's a pretty nice attack cam too. Another cam you can do is in this corner. You want to just jump throw like that. And this allows you to see into art. It's also a little bit hidden from art because of this lamp that's blocking you ever so slightly. But it allows you to see their legs going across, allows you to see them. Allows you to see people pushing onto site from main. And all of the cams I'm going to show you can also be used as a warbang setup. So if you're playing in dugout, all of the cams I'm going to show you can really benefit you if you're playing in there. Because when you ping people, you can activate cages too. And then you can just spray them down. Another cam you can do when you manage to jump onto this box, which is like the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> jumping onto this box. But once you're on this box, you want to aim your cam. Here. In this, in this, anywhere in this area. I like aiming in the center of this area. So we aim a little bit low when the camera becomes blue and then we just jump through. The reason I like aiming it in the center, you can aim it towards the right or the left, but the center allows you to clearly see this area of the map. And if any enemies are hiding in there, you can ping them. And if you're playing in dugout, it'll be a lot easier for you to warbang them. Allows you to also see art, sight. You can activate a one-way cage. I'll show you guys in a little bit. You can also see anybody flanking, so it's a nice cam. If you move this cam to the left a little bit, maybe you want something like that. It doesn't see this area as well, but it allows you to see further into art. Another cam you can do is when you're standing on this box, I'm actually not sure what this is called, but we'll call it a box. Or little, this little mini shed. And you want to aim at this umbrella and you want to jump through like this. This allows you to see into main a little bit early. You can see who's taking the orb. You can see how many people are pushing towards the orb, which is nice. Gives you a little bit of early information. Also allows you to clearly see on site. You can activate another one-way cage or the same one-way cage, but I'll show you how to do that later. A variation of this camp can be on the wall like so. It gives you a slightly better view of site because you're not blocked by this ledge. It's nice if you don't get the early information, but it's hidden and people are less likely to shoot it because they're not going to turn around behind them, look up and then break the cam. So this is a good, good cam. Another cam you can do is while standing on this box, you can put your cam there on this railing. And this is also pretty nice. If you aim this cam towards the right, you'll see into a main a little bit better. But I like leaving it in the center because it's more hidden and it also allows you to play off of your dugout setup if you're playing in dugout. So it's a pretty nice cam like that. See, this is the early information you would get if you bring the cam over to the right. A hidden cam you can do on a site is you just want to stand in this general area and you want to aim behind these railings at this arch. The cam should face down like it's doing right now. Anywhere in this area. So when the cam's facing down, you can chuck the cam. Pretty, pretty nice. Hidden behind the railings, you can see into main. You can see people pushing back site. So it's it's a, it's a good hidden cam. You can obviously vary where you're putting this cam. So you could put the cam a little bit further back behind the railings if you want. Something like this. This is less into main, but it's a little bit more hidden. And when the barrier goes down, if you want really early information, you can just chunk your cam like this. Especially on pistol rounds, you can see all five and boom. You might be thinking, yeah, you'll be able to hear people, but some teams, what they like doing, they like cutting noise, and then they move up slowly, 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 and then they hard hit a site. So whilst they're moving slowly and they're not making any noise, this cam will be your best friend. 
another early information cam that I use sometimes. So when this barrier goes down, I like walking up. And I like jumping and putting my cam there. And boom. Because this will give you some nice information. A lot of the time, people on the enemy's te enemy team will be so focused holding this angle. You know, making sure no nobody's pushing out here. They'll be like watching this. And then your cam will be able to see anybody hanging around. When the barrier goes down, walk into this area. It can be anywhere in this area as long as you can clearly see this arch. And then you want to just jump through like this. And now this one lets you see into a main, which is nice. But not only that, it also allows you to see clearly into mid. So anybody pushing arts, anybody who's hugging the wall down there, maybe he's shifting across, you'll be able to see his little head. So this is a pretty nice cam to do that. You can use this cam to ping. Maybe you've got Sova on your team. Ping with the cam whilst they're taking the, whilst they're taking the dart out. You can ult them. Your typical trips. I've seen people just place tripwires like this. This is not good. I mean, it's, it's all right. But I think in higher elo, people will just, you know, you can just jump over that. Because this place is so high up, they can just, boom. Or a sky dog will fade cat might hit this and break or wingman when he's running across the plant is going to break this what you could do you if you do like doing trips like this you could place it when the barrier goes down you could place it there because people less expect the tripwire to be placed there so let's say they don't use their util or let's say they just it's a pistol round they just want to rush onto the site this is a nice tripwire because they they would expect the tripwire to be there so maybe they pre-fire this and uh-oh they got hit a little bit earlier so this is this is quite nice but if you're being a little bit sneaky, what you could do is you see this stone slab. If you aim at the bottom left of it, and you can adjust the height. So the higher you aim, the f the longer the tripwire, like that. And then the lower you aim, the shorter the tripwire. So we try and have a nice long tripwire like this. This is nice. It cuts off people walking onto site. It cuts off anybody who wants to push this part of the map, which is nice. If you aim at the left of this light, you can get a nice tripwire that goes into... Oh, cipher problems. But you get a nice tripwire that goes across like this. It's good at surprising people. My favorite tripwire that I leave on a site most of the time is this long boy right here. So you want to aim at this corner. If you aim too high, the tripwire won't work because it just, it just won't have anything to latch onto. But you aim towards the bottom of this wall at the corner. And you can adjust the height. So the higher you go up to a point, And then you can just chuck the tripwire. And it covers everything. Literally everything. No one's planting. No one's pushing art. No one's pushing out of art to plant here. So this is nice. It's like, it's just a big... It's just denying space. So it's a pretty good tripwire. I suggest using this. And you can reuse this tripwire a lot in your games too, because when this is broken, and if people jump over this, you're going to hear that, and then you can use your cams to see what they're doing, and if you're playing dugout, you can warbang them. So this is a nice tripwire. Sometimes, if the enemy team really just like storming onto the sites, maybe they have a gecko who just yeah. insta-plants there, and then their jet dashes yeah. in this area. I like having this tripwire, because this one allows you to warbang everything from as soon as the barrier goes down all the way yeah. to site. So anybody in this general area is not having a nice time. Well, I don't see many people do this in general. This is like a tip for any agent. So let's say you have a smoke there, right? You hear loads of people rushing. Here. You, you just ping the general area because they won't expect you. And then you just ooh, through the wall. So when they actually do come out onto site, this works better with Cypher because you can hear when they're in your cage. And so as soon as you hear someone entering your cage, you can yeah. ping this area on the map and then just spray out and they're not going to have a nice time. So if you aim it really low at this box, boom, the higher you aim it, the further it will go. Like this. It's good at surprising people because a lot of the time people just, you know, they either run onto this side or maybe they'll get here and then they decide to push art. So this is nice. There's this stone slab on site. If you aim at this bottom right corner of it, you can get a pretty nice tripwire that covers... A lot of site too. So anybody who wants to push here is going to get pinged by the tripwire. Anybody that wants to push back site will also get pinged by this tripwire. So this is a good good tripwire. It can be a variation to 
this default tripwire that people put over here. So this is nice. Like your typical anti-plant tripwire could be something like this. This is nice. But you can vary this, so you can put it at the floor if you want. So we, we can bring it out a little bit, so we aim like that. Quite nice. That's also quite nice, isn't it? You can aim... If you aim in this corner, the tripwire will get placed further in. Like that. So if they have an enemy Yoru that likes TPing yeah. over here quite often, or TP straight into this tripwire, and this tripwire can also be used to prevent people from planting and pushing back site. So this is good, so you might want to learn this one. If you aim your tripwire at the left side of this lamp, or this little light, I mean, you get a pretty decent tripwire that prevents people from pushing from art to plant into yeah. any of the default spots, which is nice. It prevents people from pushing main to art and back site. A variation of this tripwire can be if you aim right there of this vending machine and this is pretty nice they can crouch underneath it but a lot of the time people won't be paying attention to where this tripwire is they'll be so focused on planting or so focused on taking space that you're guaranteed to hit people with this tripwire but you see this curved corner of this vending machine if you aim your tripwire inside it you get a nice anti-plant tripwire so if someone is running across uh oh and sometimes it can even prevent Gecko's wingman from getting hit by the tripwires. Because, you know, as Cypher mains, we know any piece of util that hits a tripwire is so annoying. I hit my mouse. <laughs> but, you know, if a Gecko's uh, little wingman guy is running around like, uh, 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 making all these gobbly noises, and then he goes to plan, this tripwire, you know, it's it's going to be nice, especially if he's using it from here. So that's... You know, it's it's worth learning. You don't have to use it for Gecko Wingman. You can use it to surprise your enemies. You can even do the opposite way. So, something like this prevents people from pushing art. The only downside is if someone's actually, like, here, then they can get across. But a lot of the time, you can pair this with a cage up there. Boom. And you can play here. If someone hits this tripwire, you can push. You can push onto site if he's planting. Boom, boom, boom. That's nice. You, can, you don't have to use both of these at the same time. You can have one tripwire... That's, you know, covering this area. Then you could put a typical default tripwire like this if you wanted. On pole, on the A site and B site, you can place tripwires anywhere. And it's fine. There's not like one tripwire that you must place every round constantly. You can vary them. Like some maps like Split, you need to put some tripwires on A site. You need to put a tripwire on A site at the entrance or a little bit behind. But you need to have them there to prevent the enemies from actually taking the site or planting. Whereas on pole, you can, you've got so many different ways you can... Place your tripwires. If you want to trip from art to main, you could do a tripwire like this. You just want to aim head level and then you bring the tripwire out like this. This one pairs wonderfully with the one way I'll show you guys. So I'll show you the one way now. So you want to walk into this corner or this against this pillar. You want to walk into the center of this pillar, basically. Boom. And we're going to use this colored part of our HUD line. We're going to use the left corner of it, and we're going to bring it up, 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 until it touches the dark shadow. So until the left corner touches the left corner of this shadow. So as soon as they touch, like this, you can throw your cage. And it will work fine. I've noticed with this one, you, there's some room for error, so you can, if it, even if it doesn't touch, you'll still be able to get it down. There's some really pixel perfect ones that you'd need, but this one's this one's pretty this one's a lot simpler, so it's fine. And so with this one wing and this tripwire, when they're coming onto sites, you can just boom. Boom boom boom. You spray them from down here. You can spray them even closer if you want. As soon as they hit the tripwire, you can activate the cage. You don't even need to have a tripwire there, you can just activate the cage and it'll be fine. This is what it looks like from the en enemy's perspective. So if the guy's down here, he's not going to see you. If he's in the cage, he's already hit the tripwire. So, you know, or he's already made noise. And he's not going to expect a one-way to appear. He'll be like, ooh. And then you can surprise him. So that's nice. If you want to prevent enemies pushing back side, you can just do this big long boy. Like that. And you can wallbang it, which is nice. You can actually pair this tripwire with a one-way. So to do the one way, you want to walk into the center of this wall. You can, honestly, you can walk anywhere along this wall. I just like walking into the center of this blue part like this. 
platform. And we want to aim right there. You can aim a bit there, a bit lower if you want. Anywhere on this dark gray patch of this windowsill. And a little bit on the left side of it. If you aim too much to the right, the cage is just going to bounce onto the floor. If you aim too much to the left, like in this area, the cage is just going to blast down. And if you aim too low on this gray part, it's actually going to land on this lamp. And it's not even going to be a one-way cage. It's just going to be a floating cage in the sky. So... We're going to aim in this area. Boom. We get a nice, simple one-way cage. Let's say the enemies are pushing back sight. This is how it would look. So we've got a big boy right there. They hit a tripwire. We wall bang. And we hear more people. We see more people pushing there. We can just boom and bang. I sometimes place my cam here. This gives me a pretty nice view of sight. I actually didn't know there's moths that are surrounding this lamp. That's sick. Anyway... But, you know, you'll be able to see people walking across. Yeah, they'll break the cam, but you'll get the information. Plus, if you see four people in this area, you know, they're more likely going to commit than just run away. So you can, you know, that'll be nice. If they do decide to run away, or maybe they shoot it and cut noise, or they shoot it and you hear steps go back, you can tell your teammate on B site to maybe get into club. Maybe you could tell your doors player to get into top. So these cams on A site give you so much information. If you want to completely prevent enemies from pushing out of art to connector or out of art to the main part of a site, you can actually aim here in this area of this. You see this, this little area of wall sticking out. You aim at that area and you crouch so you can adjust the height of the tripwire and you can see how it would look. Oh, cipher, cipher problems. <laughs> but yeah, so... Anybody wants to push? Uh-oh. Anybody wants to push connector? Uh-oh. They jump onto this corner. That Their feet are touching this anyway, so that's not going to be nice for them. Maybe you can do, when the barrier goes down, you could do something like this. That's fine. There is a cage that you can do. So when the barrier goes down, you can line up and then throw a cage there. But I don't do that. I like walking against this corner when the barrier goes down and I get stuck here. And now we're going to use this part of our HUD line. We're going to bring it up and we're going to make it touch anywhere in this area. So it can you can aim at the corner. You see this darker box, this big box. You can aim at the bottom left corner of that. Or you can aim at the bottom left corner of this smaller box. This lineup isn't specific. So we're going to bring that up. We're going to bring that right corner and we make it touch. We're going to throw our cage. You can bring it up if you want and it will be fine. You can bring it even quite far down and the cages will still land. So this is this is like the basic lineup. This is how it's going to look on your screen when you do the lineup. And this is how it will look from your perspective. So let's say, you know, you hear enemies mid. Or let's say you've set up this cam. You know, you can use this cam to see what's going on. Maybe you see someone hovering this area. Boom. They are not going to have a nice time. They are not. They're going to be sad. And this is the way it looks like from the enemy's perspective. Yeah, they ain't seeing you. They are not seeing you. And if he's inside here already, he has to actually crouch to see you. And even then, it's a little bit difficult. Especially if you're playing a little bit further back and you can just spray him down. You get so many free kills and the guys are going to be complaining. Play a little bit further back at the start of the round, especially if they have a KO. Because a lot of the time, KOs like knifing here because they know not many people would be playing right here. So if they knife this... GG's. <laughs> but um, if they do knife that, you can actually, if you're playing in dugout, you can run back a little bit. And if you have a cage here, you can activate it. You know, when the, when the knife expires, you can run back and you'll be nice and safe. And if the knife here. goes here, you can just break it and then you can activate a cage set up here and run to the back of site here. So you're pretty safe from KO knives as long as you expect it and as long as you, you know, you're, you're being observant, you'll be fine. So the most basic of basic setups would look something like this. So you have a cam here. Obviously, the cam can be placed here, 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 down there, up there, up there even. So, you know, I'll, I'll just for simplic simplicity purposes, and I'll explain it to you. So typical tripwire. You can have a tripwire here if you want, but let's leave it here. Just even more simple. You can have a cage here, and then you can set up a one-way cage, or you can have a cage down there. Usually I like just leaving one and then saving the other one in case I want to push this part of site. So it's going to look something like this, let's say. And you hear people coming across, you see someone, 
and you activate the cage, you can ping them with your cam. If the jet dashes, the jet's usually like dashing here or towards back sites. So the tripwire is going to hit them. Boo, 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 boo. And then maybe the sage is going to plant. You can ping on the map or you can use your cam. Someone's hiding in this corner. They hit this tripwire first. Then is there's another guy hiding here. Boom. Anybody want to plant? They cannot. And you'll be nice and safe. The only downside is if you actually sit here and spray for too long, people will actually start spraying you back. Let's say you want to play backside. Maybe the enemy KO keeps suppressing this area. I think this area is called church. Let's say that KO keeps suppressing this area. You can play down here. You can even play down here, which is nice. So if you're playing backside, your typical setup could look something like this. This is like the most basic of basics. So obviously do vary your tripwires, but I'm just showing what would work. And then you can have a tripwire setup like this. Or if you're feeling a little bit more exotic, you could do something like this. The reason this tripwire can be better sometimes than this tripwire is because if let's say you're playing on this in this area, right? And someone hits this tripwire. You're guaranteed to get a kill, but if if the person gets pinged on the tripwire down here, and you're playing down here, you've got to run all the way across, and by that time the tripwire's broken, or maybe they've taken more space. So this one could work, and you can have a cage maybe set up like this. So when they first come onto site, boom, you can spray. You can even spray into them and get maybe more kills. The second cage you could either put here, anywhere here really, so kind of block people pushing and allow you to walk into the cage. Or what I like doing is putting a cage up on top of this. And then when they hit the cage, when they hit that tripwire, boom, I can ping and I can even walk out. And whilst he's planting, I can teabag him, give him, give him a little kiss. And Obviously, you're going to want to hurry. You get the kill and then you just go back into the cage and back back site. But you know, that could work. I don't think it's necessary to put trips all the time in mid. The only reason I'm saying this is because I've got some cams that will let you see mid all of this and also allows you to see B site. So you don't need the tripwire and you can save your tripwire for the actual site. But if you are forced to use a tripwire, then the one I've shown right there is fine. The only downside is people can actually jump over it. I've seen some one ways that you could do. So if you walk into this, the center of this door like this, and then we aim just a little bit above the arch. These one ways are a little bit easy to do. So you aim above this arch, so above the top part of this door, of the top part of this arch, I mean, and then you just throw your cage and the cage will land up there, which is nice. And then let's say, you know, you, you see them walking onto site. You can actually see their legs. You can jump on, onto this. So if you are forced to play here, boom. Or you could even play down here and have the one-way setup, which is fine. If you want a cam that watches B site, gives you early information on B and watches mid, you want to walk over here. You don't want to stand on this ledge. You want to walk as forward as you can onto here. this ledge, like this. And then you want to aim at this gray area right there. You want to aim and then you want to jump. Boom. You can see into B. So you can see anybody hovering. You can see all five of them walking across, which is nice. But ooh, you can also see this. You can also see someone's head peeking from backside if they've actually taken the site. You can see them pushing out of mid. So this is a pretty nice cam that actually lets you see a lot of everything. So I would suggest learning this one. A variation of this one could be obviously standing in the same area. You kind of want the cam to end up on this ledge. So you aim a little bit low. And then you want to, at the peak of your jump, the peak of your jump, boom. And now you get insane early information on B site, which is nice. And you can also watch Link. And you can also bring your cam down. And you can also see back site. So this could be like a retake cam too, if you want, you know. Maybe you've been smoked off, you can just stand there and then try and line up with it and you'll get some information. So this is a nice cam you could do. Maybe you maybe the enemies just keep rushing mid-link. And you can actually put your cam on this little house down there like this. And now you can see them walking across, you can see them hide here. You can use this cam to activate a one-way cage, and that one-way cage can literally be you stand here, you aim, and you just throw. There's not there's not a specific lineup. So you can just hop into a custom game, practice this a little bit and you'll be fine. 
You can use this cam to activate it. Maybe you're playing down here. You can use the cam to activate the Wombat Cage. You see them walking across. Boom. They're not going to have a nice time. But I do suggest learning this one way cage. Another cam can be right there. Make sure you place this cam in this area that I'm saying. And it has to be on this orange line. The reason I'm saying it has to be on this orange line is because not only does this cam watch a lot of B main, it actually sees me. I can't see the cam at all, but the cam sees me. It's a one way cam. You can use this to activate the one way cages too that I've shown. And even if you're far back, you see my little legs. Even if I'm down here, I cannot see the cam. So this is a pretty nice cam. The ca I can only see the cam once I'm actually on site. But by that time, you've got one way activated and you'll spray me down. And pretending I'm the enemy, obviously you'll spray me down. I'll be dead. Another cam you can do on B site, you can stand anywhere on this ledge in heaven. And I like aiming at the fourth tile. So, so this one. But you can aim anywhere. But make sure the cam is facing straight ahead or a little bit down and to the right. So something like this will be fine because it lets you see into B main and people walking out of mid link. So this is, is good, gives you good vision. Some people, I've seen people make like common mistakes by leaving the cam facing too high up like this. With this cam, you're just seeing the roof. Yes, sometimes the roof is more useful than your teammates, but you don't want to see the roof, okay? And this cam like kind of locks it off and it's so high you can't see. So don't do the cam so it's facing really high up in the sky. Make sure it's facing either straight or a little bit down and facing this area. That's a nice cam you could do. Another cam you could do is something like this. You know, simple. Gives you vision. You can use this to activate a one-way cage here. And you can get early information. Maybe on a pistol round you can use this cam. You can see all five of them going across. That's nice. Now, tripwires for B sites. You want to stand on this. You want to stand on this ramp. You do not want to line up and aim head height here because then the enemies over here will just jump over. So you want to stand as high as you can and then, then aim head height to prevent enemies from actually crouching underneath it. Like so. So if anybody wants to push out of here, they actually have to break this now instead of jump over. And if they want to break it on this side, they actually have to peek out and, you know, that's going to hit their shoulder and they're not going to have a nice time. You could have tripwires. You can you can literally aim your tripwire anywhere along here and you'll get a pretty nice tripwire. A lot of the time, the further you do them, the more you're going to surprise the enemy team. Especially if you're playing yeah. down here. It'll surprise them so much. But then the only downside is they can actually hear the tripwire being placed so they'll be more careful. So I like placing it in this, this general area, you know, when the barrier goes down. Just there, nice and simple. They can't actually, you know, jump or crouch under or over it, so... This is a nice tripwire you could use. And with this one, you can leave a cage there. I wouldn't because you've got to be so precise with these cypher cages because they're so tiny that people can actually see everything on site. Even if you try your best to do it, there's going to be a little gap. Or even if you do do it, do do here. But if you do manage to cover everything, it's going to take so long. You're going to waste so much time. So you would just play backside and you have a cage set up here and you just shoot out the cage with a phantom. Not a vandal because they'll see the bullets coming out. And so they get hit, boom, boom, boom. And even if they get pinged a little bit to this side of the tripwire, you can actually shoot through this. And you'll be able to kill them. That's nice. Another tripwire you could do is if you aim in this corner, you'll get a nice one that goes across. These are the typical default ones on B site. I think what makes B site really shine is the fact that the cameras are so good. And it allows you to cover so much of the map. Sometimes I like doing like a head level tripwire. The only reason is people, people, you know, they'll shoot this. They'll maybe shoot across this. But they won't expect a tripwire to be head level. And then when they actually walk onto site. Mm, 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 you know, it's they, they're not going to have a nice time. So head level tripwires can be nice. Uh, another tripwire you could do. Maybe you want to prevent people from planting in this corner. You could do a tripwire that actually comes diagonally across. Like that. That's nice. If you want to prevent people from planting here and maybe pushing site this way, you could put a tripwire on this box like this. Prevents people from planting. With this tripwire, you kind of want to play either here or you want to play here and maybe have a cage set up there. Boom. 
And then, you know, you can, you've got room to rotate into here. You've got room to just run away. You can push out a little bit, so it's fine. This tripwire is nice. But if you want to prevent people from planting here, you could have a tripwire that goes across like this. This is fine. It also prevents people from pushing back sides. If you want to be sneaky with it, and what I like doing is actually having the tripwire going across like that. So we put it in this corner. It will go all the way across, prevents them from planting, prevents them from pushing back side anywhere. And with this tripwire, you can actually have more value if you play heaven or if you play here or if you play here because you don't need to actually warbank through this and people a lot of the time if you put a tripwire it's like here or here people can just run here and hide for a little bit so this tripwire is nice like that if you want to play heaven maybe you want to do like a heaven setup you can do a tripwire maybe you could you could do a tripwire like this then boom and the next tripwire you can do you can do either something like this which is nice, it just really cuts off any planting spots. And you can, obviously you can be in heaven. You can chuck one of your cages in this corner, the next one you can chuck down there. And then, you don't have to put a cage there, you can, you don't have to, because the only reason we're putting a cage there is we're actually gonna jump to it. A lot of the time the enemies will smoke this off, which is good for you, because you do, sometimes you don't even need that cage, but we like leaving it there. So let's say, you know, the enemy smoked you off. Someone hits your tripwire, you can activate the cage, walk into this, boom, boom, boom. Hits your second one. Boom. And you can see his, you can see the little sage planting, you can jump on a head. And then just like, you know, boom. That's fine. That It's it's like a really nice setup. But as a cypher, I would suggest either playing in this corner and having a cage set up here. Or here and having a cage set up. Or my personal favorite is actually playing here. Because when KO's knife, they either knife up there or in this general area, right? And if you're if you're playing either here or here, you can actually break the knife, boom, and you'll be safe. Some other tripwires you could do is if you aim on this railing, for some reason, like this this railing is it doesn't count. This pipe doesn't count as like a, an object. You can just everything goes through it. But this bottom part of the pipe does. So if we aim to the top of it. We'll get a nice tripwire that goes diagonally across. Another thing we could do is if we actually line up as much as we can. There uh, we go. We'll get a nice tripwire that goes across. So maybe the enemies are shooting this area. And it might not even break the tripwire sometimes. So maybe they, they just go, 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 go. And then they're running onto site. With this tripwire, you can play over here and have like a warbank set up. So you can play here and you'll be safe from enemies warbanking you. And then when they hit your tripwire, you can peek out, boom. And then you can have a cage set up here, you can run back sight. Because this will actually cover everything. The only thing it won't cover is if you've got a teammate chilling over here. He's, he's not going to have a nice time. You can play here as a cypher if you want. And as soon as they hit this, maybe you can have a cage. You can put this cage out a little bit. So it hits the cage, boom, boom. The only reason you put the cage out is to actually cover an enemy teammate that will be standing here looking for you. So that's also nice. If you, you know, if, if you've got loads of time, you can actually use this double door to get a pretty nice diagonal tripwire, which is nice. You can just put a tripwire there like this, and then maybe the next one could be used to prevent people from pushing you, something like this. And so, yeah, you're going to give them the plan, but when they actually come in to push you, you can have a cage set up here, you can have a cage there. Cage Boom. Cage triggered. Boom. And now you can rotate and you can go here. So you've killed two people automatically without having to expose yourself to five people rushing out of one cage. So sometimes having like a really retakey kind of setup works. There's a nice one way you could do. I wouldn't use this all the time, but you know, when the barrier goes down, you can walk up against this corner. And you want to aim anywhere. You see these tiles, you want to aim anywhere in them. A little bit to the left, not so close to the left that it bounces out and not so close to the right where it falls on the floor. But in this general area, boom, you get a nice cage that lands on this windowsill, like that, or the top of the window. And with this one-way cage, you can play back sight, like this, activate the one-way cage, boo, 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 boo. or you can even do it from, from here to get an early kill. This isn't the best, but it can be used to surprise some enemies, especially if they're, you know, just full-on running out. You can clear, you can get two people that may be playing closer to the cage. So it, it, it might be worth learning that cage. If I were, I would play Cypher on A site. 
as often as I can, because I think you can vary the trip so much more. And it's always nice to have like an, a one, one Astra smoke, one Omen smoke will cover all of this, whereas your cage can't, and it'll be a little bit harder for you to do that. So if you could play an A site as much as you can, it's fine. But the B site setup should also keep you nice and safe from enemies that are rushing you. The last few videos have done really good. I, I honestly, we've grown like 200 subscribers in a week. I was insane. So thank you guys. I'm glad everybody's loving the videos. This is going to be my last setup video because I've done all the maps, I think. So I'm probably going to upload gameplay now of, of like me actually applying these setups to real games. And hopefully this will help you guys out a little bit more. Maybe you might see a new setup that I haven't shown. Maybe, you know, something like that. And I'll try and stream as much as I can. I've been so busy working, but I'll try. So do follow my Twitch. Do follow my, do subscribe, do like, do let me know what videos you guys want to see in the future. And I'll see you guys in my next video.